Hey, welcome to iFlip for Math MathCast, Lesson 9-3, Part 1, Convert Mixed Numbers to Improper Fractions. Our quote tonight is by Ben Franklin. He said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Our learning goal tonight is to use the work in a circle strategy to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. I'm Mrs. Gooding, and let's go ahead and start our lesson. Here are our individual lesson learning goals. First, we need to be able to identify the numerator in a mixed number. That's the number on the top of the fraction part of the mixed number. Identify the denominator in a mixed number in, a, in the fraction portion of that mixed number. That would be the number on the bottom. And identify the whole number in a mixed number. The whole number isn't the fraction portion. It's the regular size number to the left of it. Understand that a mixed number includes both whole numbers and parts of a whole, and the fraction is the parts of a whole. It's just like a decimal. When we read a decimal, we say one and four tenths, and everything after the and is a part of a whole or less than one. It's the same thing with a fraction. Use the work in a circle strategy to convert mixed numbers to improper fractions. Here's our vocabulary. So the mixed number includes both a whole number and a fraction. The whole number is the large number to the left of the fraction. It's not a part of one, it is one or more. The numerator is the number on top of the fraction. It's the amount that is being represented out of the whole. If we're talking about 7 tenths of a pizza, we're talking about those seven pieces out of 10 pieces that have either been eaten or are left over. Um, the denominator is the bottom number of the fraction, that's the number of parts in all. And an improper fraction, which isn't really a fraction at all because it has whole numbers hidden in it, is when the numerator is larger than the denominator. In a true fraction, the numerator will always be smaller than the denominator. If the numerator and the denominator are the same size, your fraction is equal to one whole, which means it's not a fraction, it's one whole. If it's larger, again, that means that there are hidden whole numbers inside that fraction, so it's not really a fraction. That's why we call it an improper fraction. Here's our first example, and we're gonna be, instead of going through the PowerPoint as our practice problems, I'm gonna show you the example on the bamboo tablet, and then we're gonna work our practice problems on the bamboo tablet too. So our first example is to convert two and one half to an improper fraction. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I've written the mixed number two and one half. Two is the whole number right here, this big two. And then one half is the fraction that's with it. So we have a whole number and half, which is less than one. Um, to convert it to an improper fraction, we do something called working in a circle. We start with our denominator two and we multiply that times our whole number. I'm a little rusty at the bamboo tablet. Let's try that again. Let's see. We're going to start here and we multiply 2 times 2. We get 4. To that 4 we add the numerator. So 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 is 5 and we come and write that right next to it. 5 and then our denominator actually stays the same. So we start with our denominator, we work all the way around in a circle. We can draw little arrows to help us remember that. In your flip journal, you might want to be drawing these as you take notes. Comes all the way to the new numerator, and then our all the way back down to our original starting point, which is our denominator. I think converting to improper fractions is a lot of fun. I think you're gonna have a good time too. Let's do a problem number one now. So write number one in your journal and then write this problem down. Two and three fifths. So again, we start with our denominator, work in a circle, pause it, and push play when you're ready. Did you go ahead and solve this? Make sure you really do. I know some of you have been tempted to just write down the answers, but remember, this doesn't do you any good if you don't really practice the problems. So let's go ahead and practice together now that you've completed it. We're gonna start with our denominator and multiply it by our whole number. Five times two is 10, 
and add our numerator, 10 plus 3 equals 13. And then our denominator comes straight across, stays the same. I should have put an equal sign up here. There we go. So 2 and 3 fifths, written as an improper fraction, is 13 fifths. Remember, it's improper because it's not really less than 1 because there is the whole number 2 hidden inside of this. And tomorrow night, we're going to show you how to convert it back to a mixed number so that you can always check your work. We're back again where we can always check what we're doing by converting it from a mixed number to an improper fraction and then back the other way again. Let's try one more. Number 2. We're going to do this problem. 4 and 4 fifths. Go ahead and convert that to an improper fraction. Pause it and push play when you're done. Good, let's see what we got. We're gonna start with our denominator. Multiply it by our whole number. Five times four is 20. Add our numerator. 20 plus four is 24. Write it as our new numerator and then our denominator stays the same. 24 fifths. That's the improper fraction for 4 and 4 fifths. They're equivalent. They represent the exact same amount. And I can explain that to you. Let's look at this first one so we can show you. Well, actually, let's look at the example so I can show you how they re represent the same amount. 2 and 1 half is essentially 2 holes and 1 half of a hole. So we can color these in. And then this would only be a half of this hole that we would color in. So we have two and a half. One plus one is two, and then a half is two and a half. If we divide all of these shapes in half, let's see if I can change my pen color to make this a little easier. Okay, if I divide all of these in half, let's count and see how many halves we actually have. One, two, three, four, five. I have five halves, don't I? And that's the same thing as two and one half. It's the exact same picture. We'll keep practicing that some more as we get into other types of fractions. Let's try a number three. We'll do it in a different color pen so that it stands out from our other two numbers. Number three, six, and four sevenths. Have you noticed that none of, none of these are super tough multiplication or addition problems? So if that's something that's challenging for you, you're gonna excel at this because if you can multiply and you can add, you can do this. We start with our denominator, six times seven, or seven times six, which is our whole number, is 42, and 42 plus four is 46. That's our new numerator and our denominator stays the same. There you go. That's how you convert a mixed number to an improper fraction. And it's, they are equivalent. They are equal. They represent the same amount. Let's go ahead and go back to our challenge problem now. It's time to challenge yourself. Everybody can do this problem. You're going to have to do some more complex multiplication and addition on this one, but it's nothing you can't do as a fifth grader. Let's go ahead and convert 22 and 13 twentieths to an improper fraction. Remember, work in a circle and you'll have an equivalent answer. Come back tomorrow and check your work in class. I also want you to write down why we call it an improper fraction. That's just good to be able to explain what you've learned tonight in writing. Now, you haven't done a whole lot of work tonight. It was pretty easy. You had three problems to work that we did in our practice session. But you can make up easy fractions and then work in a circle and make improper fractions for them. And if you want to have something to do over snow days, that's a really fun thing to do. See if you can show your parents the work in a circle strategy or call a friend and explain it to them over the phone. Make up problems for each other and email them to each other or text each other and see who can come up with the right answer first. Just have some fun with it and then come back ready to take a mastery check when you get back. 
let's go ahead and go to the next one. Finishing up, review your learning goals. This isn't a tricky thing, but I want to make sure you understand it. Write down if you're at a level one, two, or three in your learning. Remember, three is you've got it. Two is you're kind of got it, but you're not sure you understand it maybe. And one is you don't have a clue what we just did during this lesson. I hope none of you are at a one because we really, if you do the practice problems and you follow along with me and you should be writing everything down, then you should be doing okay on this. Write down any questions you still have, and you have completed Lesson 9-3, Part 1, Convert Mixed Numbers to Improper Fractions. I hope I get to see you tomorrow.